What's going on everybody and welcome to an update to the Python self-driving car and really plays GTA series. Uh, in this video I'm going to be talking about some of the changes that have been made recently and uh, what's coming for the future. So uh, first of all, um, some of the updates that we've made um, basically since the last video, I think I had 0 0.03 in the last video. 0 0.04 was just more waypoints to 0 0.03 just to see if that would continue on. Um, and then 0 0.05 was the implementation of Xbox 360 controller emulation. So basically what happened there is I used VJoy to emulate just a simple joystick um, in Python. And then I used um, a program called like X360CE which could take your simple joystick. So if you bought like uh, just a cheap joystick and you wanted to m use it with something that required an Xbox 360 controller, you could. So that's, you could basically map um, pretty much anything to an Xbox 360 controller. So with those two things, with VJoy plus X360 CE, is able to uh, emulate an Xbox 360 controller with Python. So that's what I did with 0.05. Um, so basically the way that that works is the output of the neural network um, is just key presses, right? It was either W, A, S, D or combinations like W, A or W, D or S, A and S, D and so on. So take those, take that output, but the output was never totally binary, right? It was almost like it was like a percentage. It would be like 60% um, forward, 10% left, 0% right, 5% slow down and so on. Um, down the whole list of key presses that were possible. So what I do is I take that output and then map that to the controller. So let's say the turn is 50% left, 10% right. Well, take 50% minus that 10% right, that's 40% left. So let's take a 40% left turn. So set that joy 40% over. Um, that's basically it. There's, there's actually an algorithm that I've used uh, to pick the right values, but pretty much that. So that was version 0.05, and actually that made some, some pretty significant improvements. Let me make sure the sound is muted here. Um, and what I'll do, that might wind up being too loud, but I'm pretty sure this is 0 0.05. Yeah, 0 0.05 here. Um, so what it can do is actually make much more fine-tuned um, motion. Like Whereas before, it would, if it said, okay, the, the, the largest out, you know, the largest or basically what is the output node, if that happened to be a left or a right, then it would be full left, full right. Whereas here, what you can see happening is it's got, you know, some throttles happening, some turn is happening, but it's so much more subtle. Um, it can do a full turn if the output layer is really like, you know, go all out. Um, but for more fine-tuned required turning, um, it can now actually do that. Whereas, you know, before it could weave, but it was very violent weaving. Whereas what you just saw there was very subtle to get it through what it needed to get through. Um, and then this will be another example of just fine-tuned steering. I'm not sure this is weaving. I think this is just actually taking turns. Right, especially this turn up here was always really, really difficult. It's still kind of difficult. And obviously he just took a shortcut there. He's kind of cheating. But um, a lot of it, too, just correcting from turns and stuff like that, like it just couldn't do. Also, going in between two vehicles was always really, really hard for it because it could never get perfect because, it again, would always press a full-on key, uh, which was much more violent. Um, <clears throat> I think this is just driving in the hills, basically. And these are just examples. Again, as always, you can go to the stream, watch it 24-7 because it doesn't drive this perfectly all the time. Spoil alert. <laughs> But normally it just, especially in the hills, the hills always gave it a really hard time um, just because there's always stuff to get stuck on. But again, as you can see, he's able to just much more finely tune the steering and it's, everything's just much more smooth with the Xbox 360 controller emulation. Like I said, smooth. Look at him. <laughs> I'm taking this position. Anyway, um, okay. So there's that. Um, let's see. Oh, and this also, you know, one other thing that comes in is being able to control the throttle. So for example, up here is a real tight turn and hard to tell, but he actually pulls back on the throttle significantly there. Um, 
Normally, he would have just smashed into that building. Like, the older model, every time it came through this area, it would <laughs> right in there. Uh, whereas this one actually can control the throttle, right? It's not actually a hundred, either 100% 100 full throttle or not. Just like the turns, it can be very granular. Um, so that has helped significantly. Um, and then here are some more examples. I guess, or this is one with, I guess, throttle and... I don't know if he's going to turn or what here. It's been a while since I posted this one just barely made that exit <laughs> yeah normally like if he hadn't slowed down for those turns normally he would have just blasted into that wall same thing there he just slowed down quite a bit okay so then uh, 0.06 uh, is the introduction of a speedometer so actually 0.05 had 2 million labeled frames and it drove really well um, arguably, I'd say 0 0.05 actually drove better than possibly 0 0.06. Um, and I think it's just because it had a lot more data. But with 0 0.06, I um, started getting curious about adding a speedometer. So I went ahead and added a speedometer. Um, I can't remember. I think in the recordings, these are like the sound is really loud. So if it's hard to hear me, I apologize. Anyway, um, so with the, the speedometer, it seems like, at least to me, it does appear that it um, at least starts is starting to understand how fast it's going. It seems to slow down from a high rate of speed much better than it did before, and everything seems to be a lot more smooth. Now, we'd really want to you know, visualize the actual layers to be 100% certain that it's actually seeing the speedometer. I was mostly just kind of toying with it just to see, like, um, does this work at all? Like, is there any hope for a speedometer being useful? Um, but it does seem to me that it is useful. Now, the problem is with visualizing the layers, like with like something like Deep Dream, the only way I know how to do it is with raw TensorFlow, not with TF Learn, because you have to get, like, the, the actual, like, um, the graph file and through uh, TF Learn, you do get a graph file, but it's not like the same format, and it's just it's just abo simply above my head for how do we get what we want for the Deep Dream. So if you know how to make Deep Dream with TF Learn, <laughs> let me know. Um, anyway, um, let's see some of the issues. I don't know if he's actually going to run directly into something here or what. Oh no, this is oh the tunnels. So one of the, one of the main issues here is since we're using waypoints, like waypoints came from 0.03, um, a lot when he enters a tunnel, it's just kind of a feature of GTA to simulate the loss of GPS. Um, so so the waypoint disappears, <laughs> and so then he's got to navigate the tunnel. So um, as you can see in that case, he actually made the tunnel. Off many times he'll go through that exact same tunnel and he just loses his stuff because he just doesn't know what to do without the, that lovely purple line um oh yeah <laughs> and then we gave him a ramp buggy this is just interesting so one of the problems still is that he just rams right into other vehicles um again i think it's just because he's got so much of a focus on um on that mini map basically in that purple line so he still runs into vehicles in this case, it's not a big deal because he's driving the ramp buggy, so he just kind of goes right through them. <laughs> but anyway, that's that. So on to the actual stream now. Um, quite a few changes have happened to the stream. Um, as you can see, there, we actually have a motorcycle working now. Um, it works okay in third person. You definitely don't want to watch it in first person, but I think just because it's such a small th thing on screen that it just doesn't seem to bother too much if we drive like a car in third person though it just constantly is like trying to avoid itself because it just sees the car whereas the motorcycle he clearly just does not care if there's a motorcycle so so anyway um some of the other things that we've added are as you can kind of see yeah you can see the chat is we've added some commands so um the boost command just gives him like a boost of speed just really short term just in case he's stuck or whatever you can give him a boost um, also, rockets shoots rockets. I'm not sure if anybody's going to do it, so I'll just do rockets times two. And then it takes a second because there's a, like a stream delay via Twitch, so it's like somewhere between like six and eight seconds usually. Hopefully, we'll get somebody here. 
<laughs> direct hit. Anyway, so there's a few uh, chat interactions there. Uh, you can thank the mod Daniel for that one. You can also do um, stuck to get him to teleport back to the road if he happens to get stuck, and you don't want to wait for the actual automated mod to teleport him back. And then hopefully in the future we'll have some other inter you know, chat interactions like turning on and off police, maybe changing weather and that kind of stuff. Somebody got happy there. Um, also, you can change the car. So as you can see here, um, the car change is available. Someone's about to change it. Um, and it should change to a ramp buggy here in a moment. Again, because of the stream delay. There's really nothing I can do about that. It's just, it is what it is. So now he's driving a ramp buggy, which is just basically a giant ramp. So if he does happen to hit anything, it doesn't really matter. It just goes flying. <laughs> so anyway, um, also, if, you, uh, if you'd like to, you can now actually subscribe to the actual stream. Looks like someone did a boost at some point there. Um, if you have Amazon Prime, you can actually subscribe to the stream completely for free. You can subscribe to one stream a month if you have Amazon Prime and it's connected to your Twitch account. So to me, it's the same thing as any other sub. So it's like, you know, free money. So, um, so yeah, there's that. Um, i trying to think if there's anything else. Um, you know, for coming changes, for things that I'd like to change, you know, as far as the AI is concerned. Oh, nice. Someone, <laughs> someone just subbed. So when you sub, you get some fireworks in game as well. <laughs> Let's see if we can get some sound. Nice. Um, anyway, um, so let me mute this again. I, like I said, I think when it records sound, it records actually from the desktop. And it'll come through the, the microphone as well, but I think it's pretty loud if you let it come through the desktop. Uh, anyway, some of the changes that I'd like to make in the future, obviously I'm still working on like memory and reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is actually already done. Um, the problem is it's really slow at learning. So it would take probably months to see like noticeable changes with what I have going. I'm sure there are people smarter than me that could make it happen much faster. It's just... I can't figure it out. So anyway, there's just so many variables in Grand Theft Auto, but basically the way I'm doing it is, as you can see, he's following waypoints, and then we can take, the way that we can generate a score is how long does it take him between two exact waypoints. So I have a list of like 30 total waypoints. That's a lot of combinations. I could make that list much smaller to get those combinations more frequently. But basically, how much time does it take him between those two waypoints, given that we don't use uh, teleport in any way, so just purely just getting there, not getting stuck and stuff along the way. And then we can use that time to generate a score of how did he get there. Now, there's so many variables, especially with changing vehicles. The only vehicle that's really, truly unfair is probably the ramp buggy. Um, other than that, um, maybe the motorcycles, because they're much skinnier than normal. Um, but otherwise, all the vehicles are relatively equal. I mean, some of them are much faster than others. For example, the monster truck is kind of, let's be serious now. Um, so it's like I would throw out that data. Um, but we can use that. But the bottom line is it's just very slow to learn. Um, it's just a very complicated task. So there's that. Also, I'd love to add memory. Still working on memory. I've done it. I've done recurrent layers um, on this data. It just didn't perform any better than um, the pure convolutional neural network, and yet it costs like 10 times in processing. And maybe that's why it didn't do any better, right? Because it had less frames per second that it could go through. Um, so its reaction time was just simply worse. Um, and I've already seen that if I can improve this frame rate, like right now it reads and understands at about 60 to 90 frames a second. Um, Maybe on this machine, actually more like 60, 70, but for some reason on my main computer, which is actually on lesser hardware, um, it this machine processes about 80 to 90 frames per second. And this in running Charles on this machine, um, he does way better. <laughs> so I'd love to eke out more frames per second. So anyway, um, maybe that's all it was with the recurrent layers. And if we could get 80 to 90 frames a second with the recurrent layers, um, then it would be just like so much more better, um, but I really don't know at this stage. So there's that. Also, um, like a non, you know, self-driving change I'd like to make is one of the things that's really interested me about this project just from the very beginning when I put it up on a stream was that people were being entertained um, by an AI. We have, you know, well, initially we had thousands of concurrent viewers because of all the news that it got, um, but... Lately, probably for like the last month, we've had a consistent somewhere between 20 and 60 viewers at any given time. 
um, just simply watching an AI play a game. Um, that's pretty interesting to me. Uh, so anyway, one of the things I'd like to also do is get um, a chatbot going for Charles. So bring Charles in as a chatbot and interact with people in the actual chat and try to make a full-on actual streamer um, and all that. Uh, at least for the initial stuff, um, I probably will have some how to create a chatbot with deep learning. Uh, I'm not sure I'll cover the whole project, uh, but definitely something out there for that if I do get around to doing that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to uh, cover in this one. Um, I, I think that's that's basically it. Oh, the other thing. The other thing, besides doing reinforcement learning and um, possibly memory, I also kind of I chose Grand Theft Auto because there's other tasks that you can do. So obviously you could I suppose do missions and stuff, but I don't really think I'm going to go that route. I don't even know how I would. Um, but right now all we're doing is driving. Um, I would really like to get Charles out of the car as well. So I, sh I would like to be able to have him both drive and not drive. I'd like him to actually be able to commit GTA. <laughs> All right. That would be, um, that's basically the epitome of Grand Theft Auto, right? You got to be able to steal cars. So anyway, um, so I might add that as well later on. I, I still want the driving to improve. The driving's actually better than I ever thought I would be at this point. Um, but uh, it definitely has a lot of room for improvement still. But I'd also like Charles to be able to do other things besides just drive a car. I think that'd be make for a more interesting stream as well. Anyway, a lot of information there. Um, hopefully I'm not leaving anything out. A lot of changes have happened. Um, also, just to give credit where it's due, um, the chat mod, uh, Daniel, I'm not going to pronounce his last name, um, this guy, uh, is responsible for all of the Twitch interactions. So shooting rockets, changing cars, um, the fireworks when you subscribe and donate and all that kind of stuff. Um, the ability to drive a ramp buggy because by default the ramp buggy actually only has a cockpit view. It doesn't have a hood view. Um, so he actually customized that to have the hood view. Also the fact that we can drive third person motorcycles. So just auto switches to third person. All that stuff is thanks to him. So um, if you're enjoying those those changes, make sure you uh, highlight him and say thanks in the uh, in the chat. Anyway, um, that's all for now. If you want to check out the stream, it's twitch.tv slash Centex. Um, again, you can subscribe totally for free if you have Amazon Prime. You can also donate on the stream or go to the Patreon page or whatever. This is running 24-7, um, so come check us out. Otherwise, uh, questions, comments below. See you in another video.